Welding joints are the configurations of how two or more metal parts are connected or assembled before welding. Different types of welding joints are used based on the structure, application, and strength requirements of the welded structure. Here are the primary types of welding joints. Butt joint. Two pieces placed edge to edge, common in pipelines and structural beams. Corner joint. Two pieces joined at a right angle, used in frames and sheet metal work. Lap joint. Overlapping pieces welded together, typical for sheets or plates of different thicknesses. T-joint. One piece perpendicular to another, forming a T, used in structural applications. Edge joint. Edges of two pieces aligned and welded, often used for thin metal pieces. Cruciform joint. Four pieces forming a cross, used in strong structural intersections. Let's go through a sample calculation for determining the strength of a welded joint. We'll focus on a simple fillet weld in a lap joint, which is a common type of weld used in construction and fabrication. Example. You have a lap joint with a fillet weld on both sides. The weld length is 100 mm, the throat size of the weld is 5 mm, and the material of the weld has a tensile strength of 460 MPa. Calculate the weld strength. Here are the formula we will use for our calculation to determine the strength of the weld. Formula to calculate the throw thickness. Throw area. And load capacity for welding. Here is the given data. Leg size or throat size equals 5 mm. Length of weld equals 100 mm. Tensile strength of weld material is equals 400 MPa or 400 Newton per mm squared. There are several types of welding materials in the market, you can check in the internet the specification of your welding materials or get from your supplier. Here are the sample chart for type of welding material with tensile strength. Let us do the calculation. Calculate the throw thickness. To find the throw thickness, multiply the given leg size or throat size to 0.707. Next. After getting the throat thickness. Calculate the throat area. To get this, multiply the length of welding to throat thickness. Once you get the throat area, you can start to calculate the strength of weld by multiplying this area to tensile strength of the welding materials. Conclusion The weld can withstand a load of 162.61 kN before failing. This calculation assumes that the weld is the limiting factor and that the material on either side of the joint is stronger than the weld itself. Next. How about if we consider there is external forces like longitudinal, transverse, and vertical accelerations act on a welded joint, these forces contribute to the overall loading on the weld. This makes the calculation more complex, as we now need to consider the combined effect of these forces. Let's assume that a fillet weld in a lap joint is subjected to external forces due to longitudinal, transverse, and vertical accelerations. The forces act as follows. Longitudinal force, parallel to the weld 50 kN. Transverse force, perpendicular to the weld 30 kN. Vertical force, out of plane, perpendicular to the surface 20 kN. Determine the resultant force. Calculate the resultant force from the three components longitudinal, transverse, and vertical forces. Get the square root of each forces. 
follow the formula as shown. Next, calculate the weld stress. The stress on the weld is due to resultant forces. To get the weld stress, divide the combined resultant force to throat area. Compare against the weld material strength. The weld can withstand the external forces due to longitudinal, transverse, and vertical accelerations, as the calculated weld stress, 174.37 newton per millimeter square, is less than the material's tensile strength, 460 newton per millimeter square. Please note that this is a basic sample calculation intended solely for understanding the fundamentals of determining welding strength. For complex structural welding scenarios, it is essential to consult a professional. Thank you.